is everything all right in the Supreme Court now? How do you see the Supreme Court? I, I and don't its role? know. I'll tell you something, Mr. Deka. It may not be a very wonderful thing to tell you people. I don't have a TV at my residence. It's 12 years since I watched the TV. And I stopped buying newspapers five years back, of course. I still uh, watch the important pop-ups in the telephone. So, you ask me how the Supreme Court is now, I perhaps may not be the right person to answer. Ask the uh, Justice Joseph, maybe, maybe would you like to answer the question? Hmm? Is the Supreme See, Court bo both all of right us, now? Yeah, yeah. Both of us were chief justices um, in the high courts of um, uh, states. Uh, Justice Alamesu was in Kerala and uh, I was in Himadil for three years and the brother was, uh, I eight think, eight months, I eight months, yes. See, there is something called master of roast, the chief justice. He decides which case should go before which bench. This is a very important uh, jurisdiction of the uh, system. I don't want to say the chief justice. To me, I was quite clear when I went for the press conference that uh, this will send some message as to how the system should function in the Supreme Court and in the High Court. Unlike the High Court, where you have, you know, little more homogeneity, where in the Supreme Court, you know, people come from different states, and uh, though we call each other brother and sister, I don't know how much uh, that uh, uh, collegiality and fraternity and warmth, affection, etc. are there. And so it's a big question. You can read from the smile of my brother. Yes, we uh, function in our own spheres there, unlike the high courts, where we have regular um, meetings, etc. You won't believe, uh, uh, Brother Chalameshwar, in your uh, six-year term, how many full courts were there? Maybe two, three? In the Supreme Court. Supreme Court? Supreme Court, three or four. Maybe three, six years. Whereas in the high court, in the state, uh, there will be a full court at least um, once in two months. Once in two or maximum three months. Yes, definitely. Even in the largest uh, high court of Alhamad also, I checked. There are full courts because see, these are institutional decisions uh, which we have to take. It does not and should not depend on one person. If it depends on one person, then becomes it's called arbitrariness. This is which is the something that we should avoid particularly in that institution. So that was one thing which I strongly advocated and I hoped will be there be corrective measures. And for your information, which we have not shared anywhere else, post this press conference, uh, we had uh, meetings uh, uh, several days where we included uh, all the incoming chief justices, including the present uh, chief justice was part of our uh, in-house meetings as what could be the corrective measures which we could take to put systems and practices in the place of a, a person alone taking a decision. There were several suggestions, uh, and all suggestions, uh, of course, there's no question of any somebody taking a decision, but we thought these uh, discussions would help all the incoming chief justices thereafter uh, to streamline some sort of a system in the Supreme Court as far as uh, this uh, distribution of work is concerned. There have been judges, you won't believe, who despite being in the Supreme Court, the normal term of a judge in the Supreme Court is maybe around four, four years. Brother had uh, six plus years and um, me, um, five years and eight months or so. There have been judges who never ever had a chance to head a constitution bench, who was never part of a constitution bench. And there have been judges who have been heading the constitution bench, um, uh, in benches in the Supreme Court successively or quite a few times also. So this is something which we need to um, streamline in the, in the interest of the institution. This was one great thing and one most important thing which I had in my mind when I won that point because that was the triggering point also, the way decisions were taken in the distribution of work in Supreme Court. It was absolutely uh, in the hands of uh, one person. There was no consultation at all, which I said is not good for uh, an institution like judiciary. But I regret I did not see, and uh, rather I'm sorry, I did not see any signs of change uh, thereafter. I hope and pray that um, the present incumbent in the office um, 
who is well aware of our discussions and who himself had noted certain ideas, would uh, keep in mind what he had suggested and um, take the institution forward in the interest of administration of justice. I, I may just add a couple of sentences. Over a period of 75 years, in the institution of the Supreme Court, a great paradox has come into existence. The highest court of the country, in my view, in fact, I stated so in, on more than one occasion, should sit as one body while laying down the law. On the other hand, we have 16 or 17 Supreme Courts to date, division benches, 14, 15 division benches, and then what happens thereafter, the lawyers know, the conflicting views, and for every conflicting view, there is a reference to a large advantage, large advantage to five, seven, nine judges. I think there are quite a few matters which are to be adjudicated by the nine judges for the last two decades. The, that bench was never constituted. On the administrative side, though originally under the letter of the constitution, the Supreme Court had any, hardly any administrative functions in the sense of high courts by an express provision have administrative superintendents over all the courts and tribunals within the territory over which the High Court exercises jurisdiction. Such a provision is not there. It's not a supervising court over the High Courts. For various reasons, historic reasons, it so happened, quite some, some power uh, came to be vested in the hands of the Supreme Court, quote unquote, whatever it means today. There, my belief is the minute the court is exercising administrative power, like transferring of judges, appointing of judges, so on and so forth, it is the wisdom of the whole court that is required to be taken into consideration, not one individual. I can give you one, just one example, which is now it's all irrelevant today. When all that uh, turmoil was going on, there were some complaints about a particular judge of a particular high court. A lot of things happened. It appears that the then Chief Justice of India ordered for an in-house inquiry against that particular judge. None of us, I was number J1, he was J3, none of us knew that such an inquiry was ordered. I mean, would you accept this kind of a system on the political front if the chief minister were to decide everything or the prime minister were to decide everything? Now, the members of the cabinet are so subservient not to discuss things with their chief minister or prime minister, as the case may be. That's a different matter. But are we willing to live in a country like that, where all the decisions are taken by one individual? On a principle, it is wrong. The time-tested uh, statement for millennia all over the world is concentration of power is always dangerous to the people. All the constitutional systems are designed to avoid that kind of a constitutional, uh, that kind of a concentration of power. And then we come up with this formula, where from it came, God alone knows, of course, it requires a whole debate, half an hour, it's not possible to finalize. That is the basic paradox in the thing. What ought to be done by the entire court is done by one individual. What ought to be done by the entire, what ought to be done by individuals, it's done by the entire court. All kinds of things happen. 